Hey everybody, in this video we are going to be looking at the basics of how to use PyCharm. I have used PyCharm in some of my recent videos, and some of you guys had questions regarding how to use PyCharm, so I thought that it would be nice to make a video on this topic. I am going to assume that you already have PyCharm installed, but if you do not, then don't worry about it, there's going to be a link in the description down below to a video that I've recently made which talks about how to install PyCharm and Python. So if you want to install it first, then make sure to watch the video first and then come back to this one. If you've already used PyCharm a few times, then the screen that I have open right now should seem familiar to you. However, if you've not yet used PyCharm, then the screen that you will see will look more like this. You're going to have a uh, project welcome screen and um, in my case, there's a couple of projects listed because I've been using PyCharm for quite a while now. But for you, this is going to be an empty list. So the first thing that we're going to look at now is how to create a new project. To create a new project, we simply click on new project and then a new screen jumps up. On this screen, we first need to specify the location of where we're going to save our project. We're going to add a subfolder to this location and we're going to call it PyCharm Toot. Toot, which is simply short for tutorial. The next thing that we need to specify is the virtual environment. Virtual environments are really useful and I always recommend that you use them because they allow us to manage settings and dependencies of a particular project regardless of other Python projects that you have. The location of the virtual environment is usually set by default and it is okay in this case, we're simply going to leave it the way it is. The base interpreter field on the other hand is one which you may need to adjust. This field should contain the path which points towards the Python executable file and it is going to be responsible for interpreting all the code that we write in our project. At the very bottom of the screen you have the option to create a main.py welcome script but we're just going to leave this field unchecked because we're just going to create our own file. So the next thing you can do is simply press create and it goes ahead and makes a new project. Once it's finished loading, you can see that on the left hand side of our screen, we have our file tree. If we look at the PyCharm toot folder, you can see that all it contains at the moment is our virtual environment. If we want to create a new file, we can go and right click, then press on new and file then we're going to name the file that we want to create. We're simply going to call it main.py. And we've created a new Python file. The files that you create don't necessarily need to be Python files. If, for example, you want to add some documentation to your program, you can also add a text document, for example. To do that, you can simply right click on the folder, then new file, just as we did before, and then add a text document, for example, read underscore me dot txt. And over here, you can then add some text that you want to include. It is also worth pointing out that you can open the files that you've created in the Explorer window. For example, if you right click on main and then go to open in Explorer, and it opens up the explorer with the file main which we've created before. So if you want to manage your files in the file explorer, you can also do that really simply. Now let us take a closer look at the editor on the right hand side of the screen. One thing which you may want to do is to rearrange the windows and how they are displayed on the screen. So if you want to display windows next to one another, you can actually drag and drop the individual files next to each other or something which is also useful you can drag them on top of one another if you want to arrange them this way. Let's go ahead and close the readme.txt file for the moment and have a look at the main.py file. Right over here we're going to go ahead and write our first small program which is simply going to be a print of the word hello. So we're going to write print and in parentheses we're going to write hello. Now one way to run this program is to go ahead and open the terminal on the bottom of the screen over here and you can go ahead and write python and then the name of the file which is main.py and you'll notice that if I hit enter 
then it will display hello in the terminal, which is exactly what we wanted our program to do. However, this method of running programs is a bit inconvenient, and there is a better way to do this. If you have a look on the top right hand side of the screen, you can see that there's an option to add configuration, and right next to that, there is a play button, which uh, says run, but at the moment it is still grayed out. In order to be able to use this button to run the program, we need to add a configuration. Now there are two ways to do this. There's one short way and one longer way. The longer way is actually to go ahead and click on this field, then on the plus sign, then on Python, and then fill out all these specifications. But there is a quicker way to do this, to have all of this automatically filled out, which is you simply need to press Control, Shift, and F10. If you do that, it automatically adds a configuration, and then you'll be able to save this configuration by saving main configuration in the drop-down menu over here. In order to see that the specifications have all been filled out automatically by simply using the shortcut, we can simply go to Edit Configurations, and you can see that each field that we had before has been filled out automatically by Python. So using the shortcut is really the way to go. It is much faster and saves a lot of time. The next thing I want to do is show you a couple of shortcuts that we can use in the editor that are going to become really useful to you if you start using PyCharm on a regular basis. So the first shortcut I want to show you is how to duplicate lines using Control D. So let's go ahead and select the first line and press Control Duplicate, which is Control D, and you can see that we can duplicate a line indefinitely. Another really helpful shortcut is Control and Q. And this allows us to fetch the documentation. So if you have long programs and need to refer to the documentation, you have it right here in a small window. The next thing that you're going to be using all the time is finding and replacing individual words in your code. If we want to find the word hello in our code, all we need to do is press Control and F. A small window pops up and then we can go ahead and write the word that we want to search for. Let's simply search for the word hello, and you can see that if I write hello, it finds exactly four instances of the word hello in our code. If you now want to replace the word hello with the word by, all you need to do is press Control and R, and then in the bottom window, you need to write what you want to replace it with, which is by, and press on replace all. And now you've replaced all the hellos with a bye. Now you need to know that there are tons of different key binds that you can use and tons of different shortcuts. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but the ones that I just mentioned are pretty much the most useful ones. In addition to that, I do want to mention that you can actually remap the key binds of all your shortcuts. All you have to do is go to File, Settings, and then Key Map. And over here in the drop-down menus, you can go ahead and remap all the individual mapping of the shortcuts. So if you have a different preference to what is set by default, you can go ahead and change that. Now, let me move on to a really cool feature that I like in PyCharm, which is to-dos. To-dos become really helpful in large projects because they actually allow us to list all the things that we still need to do in our project. So if we want to see the to-dos that we have, we simply need to press on this button down here, and you'll see that at the moment it has found zero to-do items in zero files. So to add our very first to-do, all we have to do <laughs> is we need to add a hashtag, then to-do, and we can write um, whatever we want to do over here. So a random to-do, and you'll see that now it has found one to-do item in one file, and you'll see over here there is a to-do listed. Of course, we can add multiple of these if you have a random to-do, um, and we add another one, a random to-do, and we'll give this number one and two. You'll see that it will list the individual to-dos in our file, which is really beautiful, especially in large projects. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there for this video. I hope that you now have a firm grasp of the basics of how to use PyCharm. If you would like to see me do a video on how to use the debug function, then let me know by giving this video a like. And yeah, as always, see you in the next video.